Ask Reddit by Lord Infamous. What is a scary, unsettling fact about you? Odd oh, I'll be dead in less than 3 years. I don't plan to be but the odds are stacked against me. I think about that every single day. Cancer sucks. Make every day count Andy. I'm convinced with no evidence that my father is still alive and that my whole family is lying to me. I logically know he is not. But every knock on the door I open half expecting my father. Could be something to work through, but it's not really affecting me day to day. My grandfather died and I thought I would feel the same way. Nope. He is dead and I miss him but he is dead. I lost my aunt when I was young. We were very close. I still have dreams that she comes back and was never really dead. It's awful, but I wish I had seen her body. Seeing her alive and then being told she was gone, turned to ash, it still doesn't feel real. Each passing year it becomes easier to accept, because I know she would come back for me if she could. I'm one of the lucky few with the CCR5 Delta 32 mutation. Why is that relevant? It makes me immune to HIV and a handful of other pathogens, most notably the bubonic plague. Eater, a user replied to me with a link to laboratory that claims to do CCR5 mutation testing. Do not click that link. It leads to a suspicious web page that claims they will test you for CCR5 and a host of other genetic mutations for $200. The supposed laboratory is not registered with Health Canada. I checked, and they have no internet history beyond their own website. Also, the user who linked this site has a 9 year account with under 100 karma. If you want CCR5 testing please seek the medical advice of your doctor and do not trust websites that claim they can test you for it. Wow. Didn't know about that. How did you find about that mutation? I have two lenses in my right eye so it focuses like binoculars. My doctor wrote a paper about it. Mostly blinded as a baby in my left eye. DR suspected my right lens split then healed as two distinct lenses. Better than 20 stroke 20 in my right eye. That's seriously cool. Mind referencing the paper? When I was born, I was so premature that my dad, who had quite dainty piano fingers, could slide his wedding ring up my arm to my shoulder. I weighed 2 pounds, born at 27 weeks. Holy shit, me too. I was born in mid-January at 26 weeks, when I should have done so in April. I was 1.5 pounds and kept in an incubator at the hospital for approximately 6 months. I find it somehow comforting to hear there are others. Less scary and more shocking, but when I was 9 years old I survived a home invasion where I was shot 6 times. I played dead on the floor until the man left and called 911 and in my adrenaline rush I thought they couldn't find my house so I crawled with my left ass winging the wrong way and my right leg limp from nerve damage, all the way to the front door when he broke in from the back of the house. I lived with only my mother who unfortunately didn't survive. I vividly remember picking out the guy in a photo lineup while recovering in the IQ. I am very lucky to have kept my left arm. I have 13 pins and screws to make up for my shattered elbow. My left leg has permanent nerve damage and I now have drop foot. Despite my physical injuries and PTSD, I am doing very well. You have so much to offer the world. I'd like to believe you're here for a reason. I wish you the best. The world can learn a lot from you. Respect. Be well, and know you are stronger than 99% of us. You matter. I have an enlarged aortic root. It's very unlikely, but it could spontaneously rupture leading to the medical term adjusts glasses. Instantaneous death. I would pass out, bleed to death, and then fall over dead before hitting the ground. And it could happen at any time. My wife is very uncomfortable thinking about it lol. I'm a physician. If you're not being followed by a vascular surgeon, you should be. They are supposed to ultrasound it at regular intervals and do a prophylactic surgery, sometimes can be done just through a catheter, with a graft if it does get too large. 
If it spontaneously ruptures, you do still have a chance of survival if you live near a hospital with cardiothoracic surgery, I've seen it done in person. My immune system backfired and tried to murder me and almost succeeded. I now have to take multiple injections every single day all day or I'll die a painful death within a week. Just trying to write diabetes in the most badass way. Bravo. Successful. I do not actually remember a decent chunk of my life. Whenever I talk about most of my childhood I use words that leave room for mistakes and am generally using memories and ideas I've compiled from hearing other people say things about me. There is actually a large chunks of facts about myself that I only think I know, and don't have personal confirmation of. Yeah, I have the same problem. I think my brain is just trying to save me from the trauma. I remember a lot of the trauma but by now it is slivers of a memory. It's all just fractions of my childhood. I have people constantly ask me if I remember this or that and I am a deer in the headlights. I sometimes forget what happened a few days ago. Growing up I had a recurring nightmare set in my grandparents' backyard looking at the back of their house. There was just something off about the house. Something mildly sinister. I dreamt this over and over, many times over the years. In 2018, my dad, who now owned the house, went into the backyard to that spot and killed himself. I haven't had the backyard dream since. I had a recurring super vivid intense dream at like 4, my uncle was chasing us around a labyrinth with a large knife, trying to kill me and my grandmother 25 or so years later the same uncle, complete paranoid delusional schizophrenic, murders my grandmother at her condo, with the very nice chef knife I bought her for Christmas the year before. I pooped in my neighbor's backyard when I was 8 years old just gargoyled under his jungle gym and let loose. This is the first I've talked about it in over 20 years. Gargoyled. Slept in my mom's bed until I was 12 years old. Everyone believed I was just a mama's boy, including myself. It was actually because I shared a bedroom with my brother who molested me. I start therapy soon. My dad had to sleep in the bed with me sometimes until I was like 10. I had the most terrifying hallucinations nightly. I'd see actual monsters coming down the hall to hurt me. Not some BS shadows outside the window or a coat kind of looking like something. 8 feet tall monsters coming right for me. When they punched me I would feel a gust of wind hit me. The gust would get stronger the longer I say there. I was afraid it would turn to pain at any time and would call for him to come. This went on from age 4-10. One day the hallucinations just stopped. Never saw a therapist or anything. This thread is wild. One post will be I wipe back to front and the next one will be a long serious story about someone getting brutally harassed and assaulted for years. Reddit that I woke up in the middle of surgery and threw a mayo pan at a nurse before they pinned me back down and upped my dosage of sedatives. Keynote still had retractors and so I briefly looked like a dead space enemy. Have spotty memory of it. Sedation is very hit and miss with me. Has happened three times. Once during surgery, once during a nerve burn. Never went out just paralyzed for about 3 minutes then started speaking during the procedure. The last was during colonoscopy, seriously painful and asked the doctor if he was an old scout leader he was laughing then asked the nurse if I was within range for another dose of sedative. Edit, no guys I am not a redhead. I have memories of fighting out from under 6 dudes who were all telling me I was okay and to calm down and I was trying to apologize and tell them I can't calm down because I started waking up while I was still intubated and I felt like I was suffocating. I had 6 toes on each foot at birth and got them cut off you can see the place they cut them at. They robbed you of the ability to run 20% faster. When I was 18 years old, I was incarcerated for 3 years, found not guilty, and acquitted on all charges. I had roughly 12 charges, some of which would have led to life in prison had I been found guilty, 
but I knew I was innocent and decided to fight my case. My best friend at the time was found guilty and given 3 life sentences. At one point, 1. 1 stroke 2 years in, the DA offered me 7 years, and 2 felony strikes as a deal or I could roll on my best friend and go home that same day. I passed and had to continue to fight my case as I knew they didn't have any solid evidence against me. As my parents ran out of money for an attorney, I was eventually appointed a state appointed attorney who fought for me tooth and nail. He kicked ass and listened to everything I presented to him about why I wasn't guilty. Mind you, I was 18 and I was surrounded by grown men and saw some horrific sh- Now, don't get me wrong. I was no saint, I was in a gang and running the streets and up to no good, but I wasn't guilty of these charges. A part of me felt that maybe it was the universe's way of slowing me down and helping me get my shit together. Took a short while but I've been on the right track. This February will be 20 years since I've been released. I'm an alcoholic. Gotten so bad to the point I was in jail and I was admitted into a psych ward once. My drinking life was wild and destructive. Decided I've had enough. After two failed attempts I'm currently 36 days sober, the most sober I've been in years. I have unusually good night vision, extra cones rods, I forget which is for low light, which means I walk around in what other people consider complete darkness, able to see just fine. Add on to that I'm 6 minutes, and 10 seconds and very large, basically a cryptid. You could single handedly stoke interest in Bigfoot again. If you're committed to night walks. I don't know if scary, unsettling quite fits here, but if I met you 3 years ago and then haven't seen you since then, I will remember your name and several random things you told me. I've had to learn to play dumb and act like I don't remember certain things, because it creeps people the fuck out and gives off a stalkery vibe. Though it is useful when I want to screw with someone. Same. Friend. I can't remember what I did over the weekend though. My best friend tried to kill me when I was 13, and I had to fight and disarm a classmate menacing the class with an industrial nail gun when I was 17. My friends have a running joke that my teenage years were cursed. I have no will to live and I'm only still here so I don't upset my family and friends. Live to spite whoever gives you grief. I've considered suicide far more than my wife knows. Was once a serious option in my life when things got hard and I felt trapped. Sometimes it's just a casual thought. I'm also a very light fun person in social situations, always trying to make people laugh. But I'm actually really depressed and can't stand myself a lot of the time. Edit 3. Thank you all for you kind words of encouragement. I hope we can all make it through whatever dark times we may find ourselves in. Edit 2. I have been to therapy and have been on meds in the past. In between therapists right now due to an insurance change. And it's challenging to find another therapist as helpful as my first one. Edit. Added more info. I know the feeling well bro. Glad we're not alone. Sometimes I think I have memories of being sexually molested or exploited as a young child. But I can't ever be sure if the memories are real, and I wouldn't dare ask anyone. Edit, I am shocked and horrified at how many others have similar experiences suspicions. But the amount of people that feel comfort in knowing they aren't alone has made sharing this post worth it. Wishing you all clarity, peace, and healing. I have the same. I would have had to be 3 year or younger to fit the timeline. I heard some rumors of questionable people who were around me, had horrendous nightmares from the age of 4 to about 8 that I can remember, and vividly remember me masturbating or humping things when I was about 3 or 4. It developed into many more things as I got older by I'm glad I'm not too messed up now but sorta wish I could remember for sure if that happened or not. Since I was very young, age 9 or 10 I think. I've had thoughts that I was going to die young. The older I got, the age 24 just kept reoccurring. I'll be 24 in a few months. I have appointments for neurologists for a suspected brain tumor coming up. Nothing is certain or set but this all feels very weird. 
if it's any comfort. I had the exact same feeling and a specific age kept reoccurring for me too. I passed that age a few years ago. I have a tendency to self-isolate, and it's damaged very long-term friendships because people don't understand that it's not the bits me and that I really mean no harm or have any ill feelings towards them. I just kinda want to recede into my own mind. I feel really bad about it and keep telling myself to reach out but I don't. I could have written this. I watched people I thought would always be there drift away because I let those relationships die. Sometimes people get hurt and I have to explain that I have no ability to maintain relationships and that it's not their fault. I'm 25 and it seems to only get worse. My father hit me, sometimes closed fist. He even pointed a gun at my sister and I and threatened to pull the trigger if my mom left him. He's also a drug addict. That's not the scary thing about me though. The scary thing about me is that my father is in me and can come out. People think I'm a really nice person and I really try to be a good person, but when I get angry, like really angry, he can come out. This is why I don't drink or do drugs, I have to stay on top of it. I have the belt that my father liked to hit us with, he wanted me to have it for some reason. I keep it hanging so that I have to always see it and remind myself to keep myself in check. Edit, I made this comment and didn't think about Reddit again until almost a day later and saw it blow up. Thank you to everyone who wished me well. I am doing well now, I've had a lot of therapy and I have a great fiancé and, and a loving son who is awesome and I have never laid a hand on him. I am my father's daughter in a similar way. He was an angry man and I inherited at least a way to trigger that temper in myself. I've sworn off having children because I'm terrified I'll turn into him. I know it's unlikely and I've learned and grown a lot through therapy and whatnot but I don't want to risk it. It makes me sad a little but I don't have a strong desire to have kids anyways. I had my appendix removed in England. So part of me is in Canada right now and another part of me is in England. That's about all I got. We're keeping it safe. Don't worry. My dog and my mother died in the same year. I was so-